Hello, this is Chris, and at last we've reached the point where we're going to start building the little chef, and I'm going to take you through the trickiest bits of the build. And hopefully you've now got to the point where you've mounted all your kit paper onto boards. Um, I, I've tried various different ways of gluing the paper to the board. I, I think really at the end of the day, the best one is something like spray mount. And if you spray it onto both surfaces, then you'll get a permanent hold. On this occasion, I've used um, studio gum. And I, I think actually if you're spraying with matte varnish, which I recommend you do, mount stuff onto boards first. Otherwise, <laughs> you'll get paper flapping around the garden if you do it outside like I do. All right, so get everything mounted and then you're ready to go. And just to say, I'm, I'm relatively new to making this kind of video, but I thought it would be really useful to have, you know, step-by-step -step instructions for this build. So please put comments down in the box below and please like these videos as well and give me some feedback. It'd be nice to get that. All right. Um, by the way, I've, I've experimented also with lots of different kinds of matte varnish and I found one now that I think is is really good. This is a, a matte inkjet fixative and varnish and I think it's it gives a lovely coating it just takes away the shine and it doesn't crack when you bend or cut into it I've tried lots of different ones that I've found not quite right and this is the latest one that I've bought and I'm really enjoying using it just to give you an idea of the difference you get I mean this is um can you see the shine there this is one that hasn't been varnished and then this is one that I worked on last night and you can see it's already with one coat beginning to take away the shine. There's the difference between the two. And, and that's what you want. You want a kind of more realistic look. Anyway, we'll leave that to one side. The next stage is to really just cut out all the bits you're going to need. Um, we'll talk about the roof later on because a couple of things you need to do there. This is a medium card, so this is going to be fairly easy to cut through. We'll talk about this very soon as well. Um, the, the main hard cut is getting through these hard boards. Um, the fiddliest one is this window detail with the toilet windows, which I'll take you through a little bit later on. But you can see I've already started cutting out some of the, the main bits. And in fact, with this build, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a frontage because there's some nice little details that we can work on together like the curtains okay now what i'd recommend with this kind of cardboard is good steel rule snap a fresh blade off on a on a craft knife so that you're working with a really good sharp blade and i had an art teacher who used to say he was called mr satterthwaite and he was a lovely bloke and he used to say cover that of which you want to save so when you're cutting into something cover the bit you don't want to lose is what he was saying and I work with gentle strokes but plenty of them so for example this one might take me four or five you can feel it when it goes through with quite a few of these hardboard panels don't worry too much about them looking completely gorgeous at the edges because some of these are going to go inside the model and some of them are sort of behind the scenes because they're covered with other detail. So gentle strokes, work your way through. And once you've cut out all your bits, I suggest you put them in a, in a box nice and safely and then you'll come back to them when you need them. I've tried to line everything up on the sheets so that you know if you're making a cut you can do it from there to there if you want to uh, so you're not wasting knife action if that makes sense so one more cut to make on this bit you can see then if you turn it over the whether or not you've made it all the way through. And I find sometimes actually for the final cut, I can use the groove that I've created and just use the knife free flow because the groove is deep enough to, to guide you. There you go, there's a, a panel. So I'm gonna put that in my kit box of parts ready for later and we'll build that up. 
The bits we're going to need for the frontage of the restaurant are this bit, and we're also going to need these two little wall details. So I'm nearly through with these, you can see, I've been working on these in advance. So let's just do this together, and then we'll get onto the window detail in a minute. It's quite satisfying when you feel the knife go all the way through to the other side. There we go, there's a piece. And as I say, you know, do it as best you can, but this is going to be covered with other details at the end of the day. So if the edges are slightly rugged, I mean, it's important that this bit's nice and clean because the roof will go on there. But even this paper, if, it, if you wanted to, could be peeled off but because that's just a template, really. But there we go. There's, there's one of the bits of our frontage. Put that in my kit box. And then these are crucial for the front of the restaurant too. So I'm gonna just make sure these are worked clear of the board. There we go. And I, you know, I save all this cardboard because it's useful as glue spreaders. It, you know, it might just be useful for creating another detail if you need a spare sheet for something. It's all good stuff this for, for future model making. Let's just nick that off. So you can see now, already, we've got a sense of what the front of this restaurant's gonna look like. And once we've combined that with the other parts, we'll be there. So let me take you through the next bit I'd be working on. So here's the frontage of the restaurant. We'll have a little chef sign on there. And there's some tricky details on this, which I will explain. If you look very closely here, I've, and I've put a, a bit of an instruction there, we really need to make sure that we've got that little square. So just be careful when you're cutting down here that you leave a little edge. So what I sometimes do is start by just sinking my knife down into that to make sure I can feel it when I cut to the edge. Okay, so I'm just going to sink down into that. And sometimes here, because this is a slightly thinner cardboard, I use my scalpel instead. And again, using lots of different strokes. So cover that of which you want to save. That's good old John used to say. Go to that nicked edge that I made. And this is a, again a brand new scalpel blade. So, yeah, you choose what you want to use in terms of knives. They do tend to wear out very quickly when you're cutting through cardboard. It's basically like a, a fine sandpaper that you're, you're cutting through. So your knife blade will wear down quite quickly. Okay, just turn that over and see. Yeah, we're nearly through there on that one. Again, I'm going to use that as a, as a guide. If you do do that, be careful that you don't suddenly slip and the blade cuts through the nice wood detail. All right, so I'm going to continue cutting this one out. I might as well, while I'm at it here, go all the way to the end of those little chef signs because they're all in line with each other. Just makes life a bit easier. Gentle strokes. Working my way down. I should pull clear. There we go. All right, so I'm going to continue cutting this out, and then we'll um, we'll get back together again in a minute when we've got all the parts we need. And then I'm going to talk about the windows and the curtain details, which is uh, a lovely bit to finish because it'll give you a real sense that things are beginning to take shape. Right, hello. Now here's something I failed to mention earlier on, which I think is important. And when I was doing the the things you need to make the model. Um, pack of felt pens is really important and you can see on the kit I've given you a little diagram here that says run a felt pen. Now this just helps the detail when you're putting the model together. So what I mean by this is I'm going to grab my red. If you've got any bits that are going to expose as, as white or card coloured it's worth investing the time 
in running a felt pen along those exposed areas and I've tried to mark everywhere where you should be doing that. So here we go. You can see it just gives it a nice edge. And then again here on the top where the wood would end, the wood facade, I'm going to use a brown felt pen. I'd normally take my time doing this, but just rushing it a little bit. We'll, we'll use this technique on the windows as well in a minute, which I'll show you. Just gets rid of those white edges that you see, which catch the light. If you go over it a little bit, don't worry, because you can't see it. And can you see how that, that just improves things immediately? I've put some red overspill ink here, which helps as well. Okay, so just make sure you follow those wherever they're needed. Just need a little bit of red there where I've nicked the paper. So it's just like a little, little bit of camouflage, really. Okay. Now you'll notice that I didn't run a pen down these sides. And that's because we're going to run these little wraps that will give it a nice, realistic gutter pipe feel, waste pipe, and it'll, it'll be slightly curved, so it'll make it look, make it stand proud and make it look a bit more realistic. So for here, we go to the, the sheet of frontage parts, and I'm going to whip out this little section here, the downpipe wraps. Now, these have been sprayed with matte, but they would actually work just left as they were when they arrived. Gloss. So I'm going to show you how I do these. And it's one of the, the little fiddly bits. There we go. And then don't worry too much about these bits because a little bit of extra won't do any harm. So just you can just cut these quite randomly. And these are going to wrap over the side here. Now, for this, I always use Pritt Stick because it, it gets the paper nice and wet and makes it easy to, to curl around the, the side. So a bit of, bit of um, scrap paper and a trusty Pritt stick. Now what I tend to do with Pritt stick is I, I rub a generous amount on and then I use a piece of waste card just to even it out. Don't press too hard or you take all the glue off. And you can see immediately the paper starts to sort of get a bit wet, which is good. And I'm going to just wrap it round. You can always trim the bottom or the top if it's a bit too long. And can you see that gives us a nice little curved effect, which is going to stand proud of the building and create our downpipe. So let's do number two. I'm just going to press it down to the my scrap paper. Just make sure it's right up against the edge. I think that's pretty good. I've, I've missed a little bit there, so don't worry if you do that. Just I think it dried up a little bit, so just go along the edge again with a bit of Pritt stick. Bring it all together. You can always rub that 
that way a bit. Okay. Just realised that I've I've just slightly bent the cardboard there, but that will be covered. So you see that little bend. I'm not going to worry too much about this. Normally I'm closer to the action, but because I've got this camera here, it makes it a little bit trickier. Okay, so there's me. There's my downpipes, so we're, we're getting there. We're, we're making good progress. Next, it's the windows. Now, this is probably the fiddliest bit you will do of the whole kit. And for this, I recommend using a really sharp scalpel blade. And I might move to this ruler, okay? Now, this takes some time. I might just move off the microphone slightly here and it takes a bit of precision. You've got to be really careful. And I tend to work with the blade right on top so you can see exactly where you're going. And it really does require patience. One little slip and you could spoil these windows. But just breathe before you cut. I tend to take an in-breath <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to turn it over now and let's do the other side. Really be careful about lining that ruler up and press nice and hard. Spend a bit of time just pushing into the corners. That'll make life a bit easier. So pressing down, press. So it's a bit of a bit of a fiddly job this, but you know. From a distance, it always looks good. Okay, so we're working on, you can see, we're working our way through there. Can you see that? And then beginning to, you can see the cuts there. So it begins to get quite nice when you can feel them springing out. You can almost see, you can feel it when you hit the corner. There you go, you see? Once you've got these details done, you really feel like you're onto something. It's lovely when you feel it giving way. fiddly but worth worth spending some time on by the way this door is slightly more fiddly because you've got to go around the handles so that's that requires several deep breaths here and just do this. Haven't gone quite far enough down on the bottom. I just need to go over that again. It's a bit better. Then we need to do exactly what I was talking about and just run around those bits of window with a felt tip pen so that you don't get white bits showing underneath. OK, 
Okay, so just draw inside them basically as if it's a stencil. And you'll see what I mean. You see you get a glimpse of a glimpse of white there. But if you've gone over it with a felt pen, it just looks more realistic. You don't have to do this, but I think it's worth the effort. Well, you can see we're getting somewhere now. We've got the frontage, a little bit of behind the scenes, our window detail, which we'll need to put some glass in, and these two little bits of wall, which are going to go here, and they're going to be covered by some brick detail. So let me just move this away, and I'll take you through how to do those little bits. The important bit here is to make sure the bottom is nice and clean. So line your ruler up carefully and get a nice sharp edge there. These bits you can be a little bit more relaxed with. I sometimes run over a bit more of the edge here, but by all means Stick to using the metal ruler if you're nervous about making mistakes, because I've done this a few times now. Okay. There we go. And we need to nick out these bits. Because these are going to go behind, they're not that crucial that they're straight. Well, that'll do nicely. Okay. And that is going to be wrapped over the wall detail. Okay. Wrong one. <laughs> this one. Okay. So again, I'm going to use Prit to do this because it makes everything nice and wet to make sure I've got a, a dry bit of paper. plenty of glue on. Be really careful at this stage not to rip a piece of paper, rip your detail because it's easy to do that so just do it gently, take your time, spread it out and then I tend to place my piece of wall. You can slide this around a bit which is nice Line it up with the, the edges. Okay. I cut that slightly in a slightly dodgy way. And then what I do to get those edges nice and square and brick like is I, I use a steel rule and I push against the edge and then wrap it round. Okay. Push against the edge. Really press hard here to get a, a good bit of... I'm just going to rub a bit more glue there. Push. And flip it over. Okay, and look at that. See, it's already beginning to look like a... a and I'll just nick away that little bit that's behind. Okay, so you can see now already we're getting a three-dimensional look to the front of the restaurant and I can always go over this <coughs> little white bit here with a, a felt-tip pen so that they're useful to have in your armory, felt-tip pens. That's quite exciting isn't it? It's already beginning to take on a different dimension. So I'm going to work on the other one and we'll come back in a minute and talk about curtains and glass. Okay, so I'm just checking my front windows and making sure there's no white bits on show. I'm happy with that. And just to talk about the, um, the windows, 
I've given you a, an acetate sheet. So cut that to size. And I would recommend here using spray mount. Now remember when you're doing this, and I've made this mistake myself, spray mount the back of the windows, the back of the windows, and then you can press it against the glass and it'll stay beautifully and then your windows are in place. Don't accidentally spray the front and don't spray the glass because you'll end up with stickiness all over. So turn it over, put your spray on there and make sure that the, the glass is nice, really nice and tight with the bottom of the windows. That's going to give you some strength. All right, so I'm going to do that myself very soon. You can see I've completed my two brick features. So they're going to go in place here. I'm going to put the burglar alarm up here eventually and uh, one of the little chef signs across here. Good. Now, the curtain detail I'm quite excited about because this is a, a new addition. I've just updated them and I think it really improved the curtains. Uh, if you haven't got the new curtains in your kit, do let me know and I'm happy to send you just the curtains. Because the newer kits that I'm sending out have those on. All right, so this is just a little bit detailed. Now, what we're aiming to do here is, can you see I've put a dotted line there? Okay, you need to cut between that and that line, that line and that line. Okay, so we need that to be cut there. And we need this triangle to be cut out. So we're going to score from there to there, through the paper, there to there. And this is our fold line here. You'll see what I mean in a second. So let's first of all um, make those those line marks. So I'm going to put my ruler carefully in place and work from there to there, there to there. Make sure you can see from above what you're doing. Good. Okay. There to there. And now we can cut out these these triangles. And you don't really need the ruler here, but it's up to you. I'm doing this for speed of the film. Okay, those are done. Now, they look a little bit boring just like that. So this new idea is to grab a ruler and make sure it's between those two lines and we're going to fold them round and create a bit of a, a curve. Okay, you can manipulate these afterwards. So again, let's move on to the next one. Fold it round. Fold it round. And don't worry if they're a little bit uneven because in real life curtains are a bit uneven, aren't they? Play the paper a little bit. I've even played a bit with rolling this around a, an object just slightly here to create an extra bit of bend. This is a paintbrush handle here. Okay. 
And the other thing I did the other day when I was playing around with this was to to grab a glue gun and run a little strip of glue down the back there, which hardens quite quickly. And then you can almost wrap it round that glue gun glue. Gun glue. So there's a, another little possibility. OK, so there's, there's my curtains beginning to take shape. And the nice thing about this is they're going to go behind. So you're going to get this this three dimensional scene with the curtains. So just to give you an idea, you see that they're, they're sitting behind there in three dimensions. So I'm really pleased with this new little detail. I think it really adds something. All right, so curtains done, glass ready. We're going to make our front of the little chef sandwich very soon. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Right, I've just spray mounted my windows, so they're going to go in place now. Making sure that it's right against the bottom of the, the acetate. And the nice thing about spray mount is you can remove it a couple of times. But that looks pretty good to me. So the sandwich is going to be as follows. Base, glass, frontage, brickwork, sign, and curtains behind. So I'm going to trim these curtains. I've got a little bit of glass I need to trim off there. And then it's down to good old Yoohoo and some clamps to get the front of the restaurant complete. Back in a sec. Well, we've nearly done the front of the restaurant, so let's get cracking. I'm going to turn this over and bunk some prit around the frontage. Okay, that's to put my curtains in place. And let's try and get those right in the centre. Okay, and it's the top that's important that they're in line. Okay, so Prit stays nice and wet for a while. And then you can really check you've got those centered properly. So just make sure they're dead center. The top is even. You could measure side to side if you want to be really accurate, but I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. And then just press down and get those curtains. in situ. Okay. Move away any glue. How does that look? I've spray mounted my um, windows. These are going to go on top here to give us this 3D look. And then we're going to glue this in place as well and hopefully everything's dead center if we've done it properly might just check the curtains are useful because they give us a uh, two millimeters two millimeters i'm happy Right, Yoohoo time. Do you like a bit of Yoohoo? So let's just pop that round, all the way round. Don't go too close to the edge. Those windows will be held in place in a sandwich. Check we're in the centre again. And then 
pop them in place flush with the bottom and just line them up with those curtains just going to check I'm happy with the centering by popping that over that's pretty good I might need to just move this way slightly so I'm ready to glue this bit in place so good bit of glue here Good bit of glue here. Don't put it on the bottom. These little strands that you get, you can always remove with the blade afterwards. Pop it in place. Make sure you line up the top. And that's exciting. At this point, I use some clamps to hold it in place and make sure everything's sticking down really well and just check that that point is really on top because that's where the roof's gonna land all right so we'll leave that for a bit and then again using YooHoo we'll glue these in place and clamp them down welcome back I've um <laughs> I've, I've completed the front of the restaurant and uh, I'm going to take my clamps off now. And I've been a bit sneaky. I've put the little chef sign in place. And uh, I tend to use a pair of tweezers. So once I've cut it out, I'll um, just put that in place with a bit of glue on behind. Make sure you get it straight. There's nothing more annoying than um, a wonky sign because... Uh, Unless, of course, you want it to be wonky and look like it's dilapidated. But I'm pretty sure I've got that dead centre. I'm just going to move it along slightly. And remember, when before you put the sign on, do exactly as I did before and run the felt tip pen to get rid of any white bits. I've just left a bit there for you to see. You can always touch it up afterwards, but make sure you're careful not to go over any of the lettering, but just to get rid of those grey bits of card. And when that dries, that'll that'll look fine. Nice little frontage, isn't it? So we've got our little chef. There's where I cut the sign out from. We use the long one for the frontage. And there's the pen icon to remind you to, to go around the edges with a, a red pen before you stick it in place. So let's get one of the completed little chefs. And there we go, voila. There's your um, northern little chef and there's your southern little chef on the other side of the road, which is just being built, due to be completed and opened soon. Uh, you, you notice I've got the big sign here and the burglar alarm next to it. Uh, my preference now is not to have a sign there and just to have the burglar alarm, but that's up to you. You've got all the bits in there. And that is the first part of the restaurant complete. Join me again for further updates on, on how to put the thing together. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching. It's been good fun doing this with you. And I feel like we're making real progress now.